Today we're heading to the giant of our solar system, Jupiter, or to be correct, one of its Galilean moons. The moon we are going to visit today is the largest of the solar system, being larger than Mercury itself. It is also a frozen moon, with a surface looking like a vast ice ocean, dotted with craters and ridges. Also, this is the only moon of the solar system on which you may observe polar auroras. So maybe you have guessed it, we are going to talk about Ganymede. Ganymede was officially discovered by Galileo in the year 1610, when he decided to point his telescope toward Jupiter. He described what he thought were stars around Jupiter, until the following night when he reiterated his experiment and discovered that two stars had moved. He concluded that those were bodies orbiting around Jupiter, and called them Medician stars, in honor of the Medici family. However, Chinese astronomical records report that Gan Di, a Chinese astronomer, had observed Jupiter's moon with naked eye in 365 BC, what is possible but only under exceptional circumstances. So Ganymede is the third Galilean satellite of Jupiter. It has a diameter of 5,268 kilometers, making it the largest moon in our solar system, being even larger than the smallest planet of our solar system, Mercury. However, Ganymede's mass is only about the half of Mercury's one, indicating that Ganymede is probably composed of about 50% of rocks and 50% of ice. Let's first focus on the surface. Globally, the surface of Ganymede is mainly composed of ice, CO2 and SO2, which is brought by the volcanism on Io, another moon of Jupiter. Many other components are found, such as sulfuric acid, organic compounds and some salts. When you observe Ganymede, you directly notice the presence of two distinct kinds of surfaces, the dark regions and the bright regions. Dark regions are older and show a high crater density. They appear to be less icy and are composed of clays and organic materials such as tholine, which is one of the most abundant organic compounds in the solar system, considered to give the reddish-brownish color of Pluto or other Jovian satellites. These craters are thought to date from a late bombardment that occurred 3.5 to 4 billion years ago. Light regions appear to be much more icier. They show less craters, but a lot of grooves and ridges. They are considered slightly younger than the dark regions. The groove terrain formation is still a mystery for science, but is probably due to tectonic activity, itself due to tidal heating events. To understand that, let's quickly talk about a particular mechanism called orbital resonancy. The idea is that you cannot orbit Jupiter or any other body as you want. In some cases, you won't have a stable position, simply because you will suffer from other bodies' attractions. You should find a stable point or a stable orbit. One of the causes of unstable orbits is orbital resonancy. Orbital resonancy occurs when two or more objects' orbital periods are related by a ratio of small integers. In this case, they will interact with each other and create resonancy, meaning that forces will act on each other and accumulate to eventually lead to more unstable situations, where the bodies will see their orbit change until there is no resonancy anymore. However, in some cases, this resonance system remains totally stable, meaning that the mechanics behind the orbits are perfectly as they should be to let the bodies where they are. This is called Mean Motion Resonancy, or MMR. We only know a few examples of MMR in our solar system, five to be precise, concerns planets and moons, but many more concerns asteroids. What interests us here is the fact that the three inner Galilean satellites of Jupiter, Io, Europa and Ganymede, are in orbital resonancy, or more precisely, in a one 2, 4 resonancy, meaning that for each revolution of Ganymede, Europa makes 2 revolution and Io makes 4.
Now you may ask why I explain all of that, and in fact it is thought that the tectonic activity that caused the apparitions of grooves on Ganymede was itself caused by the tidal heating, itself caused by the unstable orbital resonance in which Ganymede was before being in its current position. So now that we've talked about the exterior side of Ganymede, let's talk of what is inside, and it is even more exciting. If you dug into Ganymede icy surface, it would take you some time to reach the next layer. It is estimated that the upper ice crust is a few hundred kilometers thick. If you manage to dig deep enough though, you'll find yourself in an extremely deep liquid salt water subsurface ocean of a bit less than 100 kilometers deep. To give you an idea, the deepest point in our oceans is at a bit less than 11 kilometers. So, needless to say that Ganymede contains much more water than all of our earthly oceans. The presence of such an ocean was confirmed by scientists observing auroras on Ganymede. Indeed, the large amount of water disturbs the magnetic field of the Moon, and thus disturbs the auroras you may observe on Ganymede. And that is how we know there is an ocean under the surface of Ganymede and how deep it probably is. Even more impressive now, recent studies taking the various salts present on Ganymede into account have shown that instead of having one large deep ocean, there is a possibility of a multi-layered ocean to be there, consisting of different salinity oceans, each one separated by a layer of some kind of crystalline ice. Ice 1, for example, is the one we know here on Earth, the, the one we use in our glasses. The following are different, more compact ice forms. That sounds totally surreal. Imagine being in the bottom of an ocean, breaking what you could think is the ground, just to find another full ocean right beneath you. That is absolutely mind-blowing. And furthermore, this study shows that there may be a layer in which there is some kind of snow in the water due to ice crystals, but this snow is going up. So that means that you could have the impression it is snowing upside down. That is crazy. Following that theory, the true bottom of that planetary ocean would be liquid water in contact with rock from the mantle. We know that here on Earth, such contacts lead to the apparition of hydrothermal vents, leading to a proliferation of life due to the large amounts of minerals present there. But if life loves such environment here on Earth, why wouldn't it be the case on Ganymede? We could imagine some life forms such as what we have here in our oceans that just evolved in the bottom of Ganymede's ocean and have never seen the sky. To get better insights on that, one should wait the launch of the European Space Agency's JUICE mission on June 9, 2022. The JUICE spacecraft for Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer will travel during seven years, performing three Earth flybys, one Venus flyby, and one Mars flyby, before orbiting Jupiter during three years and studying the icy moons Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. After that, it will perform some maneuvers and start orbiting Ganymede, becoming the first ever spacecraft to orbit another moon than ours. Lastly, as meteorites lover, here are some information that are related to the stones we have in our shelves. Rocks in Ganymede are thought to be close in composition to the one of LLL chondrites. Also, a recent Japanese study analyzed the furrows distribution on Ganymede and put into evidence that they may be somewhat aligned and just related to a single event, which could be the impact of a massive 300 km large body going at a speed of 20 km per second. You can see here an animation of the surface during the event. Imagine the amount of mass ejected during such event. 
Anyway, if that is true, then you could find on Ganymede the largest impact crater known in the solar system, with a mind-blowing diameter of 7,800 kilometers. Needless to say that Ganymede is a record breaker. That is what such size represents here on Earth. So that's it, we've now seen a big part of what is known about Ganymede, and it makes no doubt that there is still plenty of mysteries hidden deep in the ices of Ganymede we still need to discover. Hopefully we have a mission leaving next year that will probably help us understand Jupiter's icy moons way better. To conclude, there are no doubt Ganymede is a unique moon in our solar system by its size, physical properties and unique internal structure and we'll probably talk a lot about it in the next 10 years when results from JUICE will arrive here on Earth. That's it for today guys, I hope you enjoyed the video about Ganymede and also I wanted to wish you a great hangout this week guys and see you next week live.